I've made about a thousand masks at this point in the upside down, and that's not an exaggeration, but this mask that I rocked in my last dollar store video is my favorite. And when you sew them up in fabrics like this, they're actually fun to make. Ish. You know you gotta make one. Let's go. I found out about this 3D face mask from Marie at A Stitch and Odyssey on Instagram, who found out about it through at Gwen Stella Maid, who found out about it through Romy Dad PS. Masks are like a game of telephone right now. This is my favorite fit wise. There's no center seam right down the front, right where your nose and your mouth is, which means there's no tiny little needle holes running right down where we breathe in and speak out. That just feels better to me in terms of science. The 3D-ness of it makes it fit just beautifully. I altered this pattern just a little bit. Now I'm gonna show you my alterations here. I added extra width on the main pattern piece so that I don't have to have a separate elastic casing tube on top of this. It's a little less fussy. And for someone who's making her 1000 and one mask, less fuss is the way to go. But speaking of fussy, I added a bias tape channel for a bendy nose bit. First, let's draft the pattern. Don't get scared. It's not that deep. Take your paper and fold it in half. Now we're gonna fold it in half again. You now have two folds. On the first fold, mark four and a half inches in, and then at that mark, mark one and a half inches up. On the second fold, mark two and a half inches up. Now you're gonna connect those two dots in a nice diagonal line. Mm-hmm. There you go. Easy peasy. Now we're gonna cut it out. Cutting through all layers of the paper. Unfold it. Mmm. Let's mark it up here so we remember what it is we've cut. Et voila. And this is your one and only pattern piece. Didn't you just make some cookies? What? Do we have vanilla extract? What? You made cookies. Do we have vanilla extract? In the kitchen cabinets. I checked the kitchen cabinets. Okay, you should probably check it again. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna finish making another mask. Now you're gonna cut four of these bad boys out, two for the mane and two for the nose and chin area. And if your face is a little more squished like mine, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take some of this width out. This pattern fits Rob's schnoz perfectly, but on me it's a little large. So what I do is I just fold out, I don't know, about an inch. It's like a length and shorten line for your pattern, for your mask pattern. Now, you can see that main piece fits me quite nicely. Mask for me, mask for Rob. Let's cut. All right, you got your contrast fabric. We're gonna fold that in half. The straight edge of your fabric, the grain line, should be parallel to the edge of your pattern piece. Just make sure that's right. Mm -hmm. Throw some pattern weights on top, also bought at the dollar store, and cut that out. There you go. Now let's get your main fabric and cut one more of those pieces out. Now for your uppermost pattern piece, we're gonna add a one inch extension to each side of the mask. This is going to be your all-in-one elastic casing. You just add an inch to either side 
of the pattern. This is gonna mean there's gonna be less bulk around the sides of your face. Cut that one out. And there you have it. Your two main pattern pieces, your two nose and chin contrast pieces. Take your first contrast piece, fold it in half, matching raw edges. Do the same with the second piece. And you're gonna sandwich them. Take your interior main piece, match up the raw edges, and do the same with the second piece. The folds are on the inside center of the mask, and this will all make sense when we put it on. And just throw that main piece on top. All edges are matching, pin around both sides. Got a little mask sandwich going on now. Mm -hmm. I like to pin at an angle. It's a little easier for me to remove the pins and I feel like it doesn't mess with the, the flow of the fabric as much as pinning straight does. That's my theory, anyway. Let's sew it up. I'm using the edge of the presser foot as my guide for how far away I should sew from the raw edge because ain't nobody got time to be playing with a 5 8 seam allowance when you're sewing up a mask. Now the great thing about this is you do not have to backstitch at the beginning and end of this seam because the edges will enclose those stitches. It's just, you know, a nice little shortcut. Because we need shortcuts on our 1,000th, 1,100th mask. Where is the coconut oil? Where did you come from? Is he still there? Okay, moving on. We're gonna notch the mask at the sharpest points because even though we're using shortcuts, we're also practicing good sewing. This is gonna make the mask fit nicer when we pull it all right side out. Look at that. Look at that little mask taco. All right, we're gonna steam out those seams, make them nice and flat. And that little line of stitching you thought was unnecessary? Hmm, it's necessary. You're gonna use it to give your iron a nice line to fold and steam on. Makes everything nice and crisp. And now fold everything flat, like a pancake, like a face pancake. And we're ready for our next step. Now I'm gonna stitch all along the folded edges of the long sides of the mask. I'm gonna use an overlocker foot, but if you don't have one of these, you could use an edge stitching foot or your regular presser foot. Just stitch about an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch away from the edge. And again, you do not have to back stitch. Now you're gonna fold in a quarter inch and fold in again to cover the raw edges of the inside of the mask. You see that? Mm -hmm. Give that a little press and repeat for the other side. All right, you see how that covers the raw edges? And now we're just going to stitch close to the edge of that little folded flap. But you know what you should do now? You know what you should do now? You should put your elastic in that casing right now. Cause you know what sucks? Trying to insert elastic through a small casing with a safety pin. We're gonna choose between lavender and eucalyptus. Eucalyptus. I, I'm not sure what that was about, but it's time to cut some elastic. Yeah, I like to go with about eight inches of length 
that's what she said, so that the wearer can adjust it to his, hers, or their liking. Got your elastics, got your mask. Flip it over, unfold that first line that you pressed, and sandwich that elastic on in there. Mm -hmm. A little snug in there. Now we're gonna edge stitch right along the flap. Now you only wanna catch your fabric in this seam, not the elastic. And you do want to back stitch at the beginning and end of this seam. You gotta lock these stitches down because it's what's holding the mask on your face. Voila. Tie a simple knot to keep that elastic from going anywhere. Repeat for the other side. And you're done. Oh wait, I forgot that I'm extra and I added a freaking bias strip casing for the nose bridge. Okay, let's keep going. All right, let's get some more fabric. Lay that fabric down and find the straight edge, the grain line. Now, my ruler has a handy little 45 degree line already printed on it, so there's my bias cut angle. If your ruler doesn't, simply place it so that the inch markings intersect diagonally along the straight edge, just right down the straight edge. And there's your 45 degree angle. Chalk that up. And we're gonna measure down an inch and a half from that line. We want this to be an inch and a half wide. And we only need it four inches long, so I'm actually gonna be economical and make this cut a little smaller. Mark it off at four inches long and cut that bad boy out. Fold it over and sew the long edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Boom, there it is. Clip those edges, because it's easier to turn it out that way. Stick a little safety pin in there and let's just thread it through and turn it right sides out. go. Now you've got a bias tube casing, which will conform to the curves of your face because it's cut on the bias. Fold it in half to find the center point. Grab your mask, flip it to the inside and take one of those uh, contrast pieces and fold that in half to find its center point. There it is. And match that center point to the center point of your bias tube casing. Just nestle it right in there. Pin it down. And now we're gonna stitch it down along that edge. We are going to back stitch at the beginning and end of this seam. There you go. Now you've got a great little nose channel to insert something bendy so you can make a nice little bend for a better fit around your nose. Here, wait, I'll show you. Okay. For a second, I usually don't wear hoop earrings and I'm wearing them. You know, you just hold that up and you just do that. You just do that. Mm -hmm. See? Great fit. Um, I don't really have to be wearing it right now though. We use the bendy strips that come on our bags of coffee for the nose wire casing because that's the kind of thing we say now like it's normal. You know, I would say 
I want a cup of coffee, but I think that maybe it's time to relax. Ooh, what is that? It's una balloona bubble bath. It's una balloona bubble bath? <laughs> That's what you've been doing? I have. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go take a bubble bath. Okay, Bye. Enjoy. Take care of the people. What? Just say the things you're supposed to say at the end of the video, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna go relax. Um. Okay, bye. Okay. Um, thank you so much for coming to watch the video. Um, I hope you liked it. And Marcy says a bunch of stuff right now. Uh, and subscribe. Subscribe. And oh, the other um, thumbs up if you liked it. And you know, thank you for coming out. Tell them what we you are supposed to be relaxing. Okay, sorry, okay. Peace out. Emphasis on peace.